It's a great pleasure and privilege to speak briefly at this first global summit on traditional medicine. And I have to say, I'm only sorry that I can't be with you in Gujarat for this landmark event. But the summit is very timely because we're beginning to realize the limits of modern Western medicine. Also the increasing importance of traditional medicine and the potential for both to work together. Because in spite of its remarkable achievements, Western medicine has so many limitations. Most countries are struggling to find the resources and the people to provide it. It's also failing to stem the epidemic of long-term disease witnessed by the ever increasing instance of problems such as diabetes and depression. Some people complain that modern medicine is impersonal and of course it does carry a very significant carbon footprint. Now conversely, traditional medicine is very personal, it's safer, mostly cheaper and carries a very low carbon footprint. Traditional medicine has also withstood the test of time, especially in India, where of course Ayurvedic medicine precedes even that of Hippocrates on which our European medicine is based. But in India, India, you are also well ahead of the game because you've established Ayush in the Department of Health and also, of course, the WHO Global Centre for Traditional Medicine. In the UK, uh, things are developing a little slower uh, without the support of government or the Department of Health. Uh, for instance, my college has brought together all the complementary modalities and their leaders in an organization called the Integrated Medicine Alliance. And during COVID, we provided virtual courses on yoga and Ayurvedic lifestyle, which proved to be extremely popular. And we've also seen the rapid development uh, in the UK and over 30 countries, including India, of social prescription, which uses the physical and social environment to help healing and health. And quite apart from all of that, I have to say I've witnessed myself um, the healing effects of traditional medicine in India. Now, in the UK, 23% of women are taking antidepressants. Uh, and surely that's a pretty depressing statistic in itself. We should be offering more than pills. Our current way of medicine has lost its way. It's surely time for traditional medicine to take its rightful place alongside Western medicine as part of an integrated approach. Time, I'd say, to break that glass ceiling which divides the two and to celebrate a new medicine that, in the words of the previous Prince of Wales, offers the best of both worlds. That is the best of traditional and complementary and to celebrate these and to properly respect our traditions, our cultures and the uniqueness of every single one of us. That is what I believe this summit can achieve. The coming home of traditional medicine and a new dawn for integrated medicine.